Our building techniques over the last 100 years have not changed. We're still doing the compound dovetail neck joints. We're still doing the dome tops. We're still using the same finishing materials. Uh, we're still using the hide glue uh, to meet the neck at the body. And every Gibson acoustic guitar that you buy is going to have those principles. It's important to us that we celebrate our almost 130-year-old history at Gibson, but we have this theme all along the way of innovation, and I really think that we are entering or are in a new golden era for instrument making. The guitars coming out of Bozeman right now are some of the best guitars we've ever built. Been here for almost 15 years, and uh, the quality is, is a step change, not only in, in, in looks, but in sound as well. We're really, our guitars right now are on par with anything we've ever produced. We've made so much progress in our processes and in our quality control. It's natural to feel pride in this, like we're picking up where all of this name recognition left off. Body is now put together. First step will be they will flush cut off any excess top that's overhanging the rib set, giving you a cleaner, a cleaner starting spot. Then they will cut the female side of the dovetail neck joint into the head block. It has to be in the exact right place or the guitar will just not function further down the road. So they have really measured tooling they use to make sure that the pre-fit is right and that everything will line out with the neck once they get to that point to join. The decorative trim you see around the perimeter of the top and back, and sometimes on fingerboards and peg heads of guitars, is called binding. Binding itself, the first step is always inspection. We will prep up the edges, make sure it's clean of all defects, and it's good to go. Um, we will seal it up to make sure there's no bleeds. Um, like I said, the melting binding could leach into the top and affect the finish, and just making sure that's perfect so that there'll be no gaps or no defects passed on. So during a typical shift, we will bind, as a department, 120 guitars. Uh, per person, that's 15 to 20 guitars per shift. The purpose of binding, there's a few different purposes. Um, mainly it's to protect the edge of the guitar, um, make sure it lasts a long time, uh, adds that final protective layer at the end. And then on the higher end, it's a bit decorative. It's like the final trim on the body, um, there's like standard G series that just gets a single layer and the higher end stuff will end up having shell purfling like abalone. We use a lot of different binding types from just a single ply, white or black, through multi-ply, different layers of, of black and white. We use a, a herringbone type on some of our guitars which is a multiple colored wood trim that goes around. And in some cases, we do abalone or mother of pearl trim on the exterior of the guitar. In the case of some of our really high-end models, we'll do the top, the back, the sides. But the bulk of the guitars just have top and back binding. And what they'll do is they have specific cutters for the binding package. As I mentioned, it could be just a single ply, it could be multiple. And they take the body and they run it on these cutters to cut the correct cavity for the binding package that's going to go on that model. Once the cavity is cut, it goes over to the binders and they will take the glue. They'll pick out what binding packages they need, a combination of white, black, white, black, white, black, just cream or white. They'll lay in the glue, lay in the binding, and then they'll tape and just keep going around until they have completed the top, turn it over and do the back. So glue is a little inaccurate. It's technically a plastic cement. Um, the way it works is by melting the layers together, so we make sure we apply it by hand and make sure there's good adhesion, so it'll actually melt each layer together and then the entire package to the wood. Every time I pick up a guitar made at our Gibson Craftery in Bozeman, I'm blown away. Um, those acoustic guitars made today will rival anything we made 100 years ago or 50 years ago or in any of the previous golden eras. Bozeman has contributed a lot 
to the creation of new instruments in the 1990s on after the Gibson Acoustic Plant started in 89. We created instruments that were based off of what was learned from the old 1930s instruments because people already were in love with Gibson everywhere around the world and they were playing old instruments. So we had to make new instruments that sounded old, which was quite a daunting starting point. So what Gibson, Bozeman, Gibson, Montana, we call it affectionately, did was studying the old instruments, putting the best craftsmen on it, building it in a beautiful climate in an inspiring way. These, these people were inspired at the beginning of this, this journey. And uh, we built an instrument that actually sounded better, if not as good as the old instruments. And now imagine if you're building an instrument today that sounds as good as an old one, what it's gonna sound like in 50 years from now. What makes our guitars different uh, is a lot of just the handwork. You know, it goes into every piece, part and piece of, of the instrument. Um, just really the attention, the detail really shows up in the final product. So I've noticed as some other departments around me are automating, our department has not received those automations. We're kind of resistant to that. The difficulty with it is there's so many inconsistencies in the shape of the guitar, the wood itself, and the plastic material or wood material we use to bind. There's really no way to program for that. For the time being, that's still we still need people that are well-trained and skilled. A lot of people, when they see this, they look back and historically, binding has been applied using a flat rope. People ask, why do you not use the rope? Well, number one, it's a very, very difficult thing to do, but even more importantly, acoustic guitars are so fragile. You can't crank on that rope, you will crack the guitar. So and, and the tape, does the, has the exact same effect. The learning curve of doing it is quicker. The attrition rate is lower. And we just feel it's best for our application and our production process to do tape binding instead of rope binding. Nashville uses rope because they're mostly single-sided binding or their process allows them to bind each side separately. The way we do things here, we need to bind both sides at the same time. So we use tape effectively for the same purpose. So. Uh, we'll put the binding on and then we'll put tape every inch just to make sure that that pressure is held as the uh, plastic cement cures. The cure time is around 12 hours. At that point, it's fully melted on and that plastic will never come off without major effort. The binding is taped up, it's left overnight, and at that point they come in the next day and they will remove the tape. Uh, at that stage, they will take scrapers, sanders, and just start working it, getting it clean, kind of like we saw earlier with the rosette, where when you sand it, the detail just pops. Binding is a very tricky process. The tension you have to put into during the application, the tension of the tape when it's, when it's put on to hold that binding in place. Uh, you're dealing with multiple layers, multiple pieces of plastic that you have to maneuver together on the instrument. People work a long time to get really efficient and up to speed where we want them to be in this process. It's a very difficult job, very hand intensive. I mean, you go over there and you can see their hands are covered in glue and, and rough and sore and, and they work really hard every day. But we have some people that have been there a long time and just do a fantastic job and everyone strives to get to that point. People train for a period of time before we even allow them to start binding on instruments and it still takes a long time for them to get to the point where we have them work on high-end custom product or they get up to speed even on the standard product. I think my favorite part of working here is working with my team. Um, I spend a lot of time on team building and making sure we all work together well and growing together. That's really what I like to see. It's a real special place to work. Uh, the guitars that we're seeing every day um, are, are people's dream guitars. The heritage of the brand is kept alive and forward with so many people that I've worked with that I had the joy to work with over the last 33 years. And it is a feeling, it is a strong feeling within us, and I have it as I'm sitting here today. I feel that this is a part of Gibson history and that we are all stewards on a ship, metaphorically. And the ship, and I use the ship analogy because it, we're, it's not always fun, it's a lot of work, but we're always guiding this ship called Gibson. And we really love the product, everyone loves the product. So passionate about it. 
And um, I'm very, very honored to be part of this legacy going toward that North Star for Gibson.